All right, let's see how this goes. Cleaning my kegs today. You can see I normally wait until I get four or five of them. It takes a couple of weeks, three weeks sometimes, however long, depending on cookouts and whatnot. A little short one there is ginger ale. At any rate, we got five kegs. I've got most of them. Poppets and everything already taken off, but I just wanted to show how I do this last one right here. Take these off, push down in there. Got each one of these labeled. You see, this was labeled number two, which will correspond with this container number two. So I can keep everything together. have a tray yet for the dip tubes to fit in all the way so I just put them as you see in the corresponding container it's already lettered then we take this I'll do that with each keg. Pretty clean in there already. And I'll just run a little assembly line. I'll go with each keg like that. And I'll come back. I'll take a rug out my pockets. Or my posts through the pocket holes and whatnot. Really doesn't take that long. And then I'll take a dip tube. Uh, brush and I just run in and out of the dip tube while it's down here in the, in the bucket. Maybe show you all that. Then I'll take a green scrub and scrub the outside and then rinse them all down. I'll show you some other stuff I do as we go. Alright, now I'm going to get some PDW. And I'm going to put a small, about a half a scoop in each one. Containers right there all have PBW, hot PBW, that everything's soaking in. Hot water. Only I'll measure this, but I'm measuring devices. I'm measuring cups being used right now, so just put one of these in each one. Now, as a lot of you already know from some of my videos, I've tried just about every cleaning device out there. I've made my own. Um, basically, I settled on this cardboard cleaner that you can get online or keg cleaner. It comes with these, and you can buy the longer ones to clean the carboys with as well. You just go right down the line with these. Turn it on high, low, whatever you want to do. Both on one side. out in the sink. Now these things 
here, just like anything else, I don't think there's anything perfect out here, but these things wear out. You see them giving out a little bit here, but they're still holding up. in there just a little bit of that water left in there just brush the poppets a little bit and basically I just go through that with each thing That will be done. I'll carry that in now and rinse it out. Basically, I'll just take each one of these and get them wet. Run the brush out the bottom. Go back through, go back through. Another thing is I used to force my poppets that they wouldn't come apart. I'd you know force to pop it out of the post. But if they're made in there, then I just take corresponding, on this case it'd be the liquid, push that on it, it depresses that poppet, and let it soak like that. And I'm not breaking the poppet. Alright. Just take some cold water. got a screen down here in the bottom of this. You can see right here. In case these get away from me. Brush right here. something I'm trying today. This is how I always rinse my carboys out when I'm done washing them. I put this in, put the carboy on it upside down like it's designed to, and then I shoot the water up underneath with this hose. This here you take this right inside. Over the hose. All right, next step, sanitization. This is cloudy because of our water here, but it's just made this a month ago. It smells real fresh. 
thumbs up. I'll take this is kind of wasteful. I just take because I made this two and a half at a time. Two and a half gallons at a time, and I just pour about a cup. CO2 back in it, everything's all sealed and sanitized. And we'll just wash, repeat, rinse, repeat. And when I get done with it, that's the keg right there. It's pressurized. We stick a piece of tape on it that says sanitize. That way I know all of these setting back here that has a sanitized label on it. Clean, sanitized, sitting under CO2 pressure, waiting to go. Got a couple of labels just sitting right here, waiting for those other four. I'm gonna bring them in. We'll slap those on, and uh, that'll be done. I know that there's. Uh, let me spin this around. Here. I know there's a uh, a lot of information out there on YouTube with all this stuff, and maybe some of this helped. Maybe. Maybe most of it didn't, probably, but I always like to see what people do from time to time like this because it gives me ideas on, you know, how I can be more efficient, maybe. This may not seem like it, but doing the video, I'm a little stumbling here and there and, you know, trying to get my routine going. I'm sure you guys that video your brew days and all that understand what I'm talking about. It's not the same as if you're just going through the motions and getting it done, but, you know, set up five kegs like that probably in about an hour. I'm... I'm guessing from the way I've done it in the past in about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes somewhere in there you know I can do those five kegs that we were sh that I was showing you uh, just by setting them up like that and doing it uh, from start to finish and putting them away and everything so you know that's that's not that bad and I do that every time I just go ahead and break them down I've gone through <clears throat> like I said before uh, the different keg and carboy cleaners automatic cleaners I've, I've uh, bought some that are manufactured I've made my own um, but what I found is this is what works best for me as far as I try to be a little bit conservative as far as water goes if uh, I'm outside I try to pour it out on the ground instead of the concrete so it can you know go back into the 
to the ground. Whether that matters that much, I don't know, but that's just what I do. Um, or pour it down the sink. Hopefully it gets recycled back through the uh, city, at least some portion of it. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, that's that's just what I do, and that's what works for me. I, I uh, don't fill up my keg all the way full and let it soak and set overnight and, you know, all that. This is what I found works best for me. In the past, I've taken and... Um, you know, try to leave them set upside down and dry, but I got six grandbabies running around here, so what I try to keep all the poppets and the posts and the, the lids and everything with them, that just isn't going to happen. So this is why I came, you know, pretty much came to doing it this way, where I'm sanitizing them and, and they're all pressurized and they're sealed and, you know, the parts and pieces that go with this keg. Um, in the past, I haven't had that big, I've, I've had some problems with it. You won't always have a problem, but... In case you didn't know, you always want to keep your posts and poppets, and some people even go to the extreme of keeping the same poppets with the same post. Uh, I'm just not going to do that. Uh, and probably sometimes it costs me a, a leak in a, a liquid post, or I might lose some CO2 or something for that, and I don't know what it is. But at any rate, this is what works best for me. It doesn't take that long to break the kegs down and, and to do this each time. So I uh, just wanted to put it up there and, you know, hopefully... You know, if nothing else, it gave you something to do for another few minutes on uh, whatever day you're watching this. So, uh, if you got any questions or whatever, please post them down below. If you have uh, any comments or any uh, video responses where you can show uh, your routine and maybe what you do uh, as far as doing the kegs, you know, keep it keg related, I guess. Um, you know, please let me know. I'm always looking for a better way. So, peace. Hey, one other thing here. I didn't know if. I don't see this posted a whole lot, but hopefully you'll be able to see this on these kegs. You see these dots, these indentions right here? Right here, these little grooves? Those are, what I've always seen, they're always on the gas side. So when you're reaching in there and you can't really read down or see whatever, that's going to be your gas side. Now I have seen, I don't see it on either one of these, but sometimes I've got one keg that's got one groove, just one on this side two on this side and sometimes I mess up and shove the the gas the uh, quick disconnect on there but if you notice on this post you see the grooves 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 what's grooves start with G what's the gas start with G so grooves to the gas plane to the liquid here's just a different version See the grooves on the post? These grooves right here. And then your little dots or indentions. Sometimes it'll say in, like it does right there. So just a little tip. G for groove, G for gas. Peace. One more thing. I had a leak around one of my kegs right here. And so I released the pressure and I spun it around where the handle was going back the other way. Gassed it up, still leaked. Released the pressure, took it back down. You don't have any of this. You should obviously have some if you're kegging. The Lubrifem, I've had this tube forever. Forever and ever and it lasts a long time. It's a lot more pliable and less sticky and gummy as the stuff you get in that little round. Where is it? Right there. See that little black case right there? A lot nicer than that. Works real good. So, just another little tip for you. Bought this online at one of the homebrew shops. And like I said, I've had this this puppy right here for probably three years, and you can see how little I've used. And I've got about 18 kegs, so good investment. <laughs>